Okay, so we're going to be looking at air propagation here. Uh, we're going to break this up into a series of videos, so you'll be able to find a chunk here and then go to the next videos for the next things. Um, what we're going to start with, with air propagation is basically when we take a measurement of something, um, there is some uncertainty to that measurement. We only have so much precision with our instruments, whatever we're using, whether that be a meter stick or a graduated cylinder or uh, even a, you know we're using a laser in order to measure something. There's some uncertainty in everything we're using and because of that whenever we try to combine values that are measured together we have to have a way of combining this uncertainty together as well. And these errors, these uncertainties, uh, they propagate through our different values as we add them and as we multiply and divide them and as we push them through functions and powers and yada yada yada, all sorts of stuff. So we're gonna look at how we can propagate these errors forward. Um, uh, if you're looking for like the CD diffraction grading lab, uh, there's another video of that we'll link into the bottom of this video um, that I've done previously that kind of shows you what you should be doing for the different error propagations. But this will show you actually how to do the error propagations for uh, addition subtraction for this video and then for later videos, multiplication division, functions, uh, and powers. Okay, so let's just start, get started off here with air propagation for addition and subtraction. How do we run those? We are going to set a value which is we're just going to call Q here, and Q would basically be your answer. Okay, so if you know we were in elementary school and we were asking ourselves like, what's three plus two? Well, Q would be the answer of five. That's what Q is. It's just the straight addition or subtraction you've always done. So if we you know, mix that up, what's three minus two? Well, it equals one. Okay, so the Q is just the value if you do the straight math of what you get. There's nothing strange about Q. It is the classical math. The issue comes in whenever you're trying to find this deviation of Q. So let's first just write out Q can just be the addition or subtraction of any number of numbers. Um, we can write this as a plus b plus c, and then there could be a bunch more things we add. These are all numbers. And then we're subtracting other things if we need to. We could subtract x and minus y and minus z. We could subtract all of those. Um, if you're clever, you could possibly write this as a value make those all positive because the negative is moving throughout. If you don't want to do that, that's fine. But Q is just the addition and subtraction of many things. The deviation of Q, because each of these values, each of these numbers has some error in that measurement, uh, means that a deviation of Q can be found. We're going to use a lowercase delta symbol. I'm just going to call this del as shorthand. And this deviation, this uncertainty in Q, so that's what this represents here. It's an uncertainty. This uncertainty in Q has to be found by adding the uncertainties of each of these measurements all throughout in what's known as quadrature. Now adding in quadrature is a little different than just traditional adding. To add in quadrature, you take the square root of the entire quantity of uh, the deviation of the first measurement, its uncertainty squared, plus the quantity of the second squared plus dot 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 dot, all the way through all of the numbers, even for the negative numbers there, whatever they are. Okay, you just keep going, you just keep going, you keep going, and you keep adding these up until you get all the way to the end to the uncertainty of z which you have added together. Okay, The square of all these additions and then the root of that gives us del q, the uncertainty of the measure in and of itself. And what that allows us to do, it is allows us to say that hey if we took some measurements and we added them together then our actual measurement would be q plus or minus the deviation of Q. This is the actual value we care about, and then this is the deviation of that value, which gives us an idea of just how close we are to the true, um, or how, how precise we can be 
uh, and knowing that's a true value or not, okay, if we can believe that. So that's what we're looking for. That's how we kind of do this error propagation with addition and subtraction. Um, if we took like an example of this, if we had a, let's do a large football field. If you've got a large field and you use one of those like rolly wheel things to kind of measure the field out, maybe you can say, hey, the entire length of the field is, uh, I don't know, 100 meters plus and minus, plus or minus, uh, two meters there, okay? And then, you know, maybe a, a person's on this field, you know, a person here, maybe it's like a kickoff in the game of American football, maybe they, they get the football and then they, they run forward. And you measure how far forward they ran, and you say, hey, look, from this point zero out to this point here, they moved forward, oh, 30 meters, plus or minus four meters. And we'd like to say, how much of the field do they have remaining? What is this remaining distance? Well, we know it's going to be around 70, just doing the math, 100 minus 30 is going to give us this leftover, right? So if we take the entire length minus what they ran, we're going to get the leftover. Should be around 70. But is it gonna be a little bit more than 70? Is it gonna be a little bit less than 70? That's what we need to figure out. And it's because of these uncertainties here that we're just not exactly certain or uncertain. So let's first just solve for Q. We know that Q in this scenario here is just gonna be the full length of the field minus what the player already ran. So we know that's just gonna be 100 meters minus 30 meters. And we know our Q is just gonna be 70 meters here. We feel good about that. To get the deviation in Q, we have to add up in quadrature all of the uncertainties. So that gives us the square root of, well, here's one of our uncertainties, two squared plus, here's our other uncertainty, four squared. Um, I know four squared is 16, two squared is four, so del Q is gonna equal the square root of 20. I know that value is between four and five, but maybe I don't know that off the top of my head, so I pull out my trusty calculator and I throw that in, and we see that the deviation here is uh, 4.47. So our final answer of how much of the field do they have left over? Well, the amount of field they have left over is 70 meters plus or minus 4.47 meters. That's what's left over in their field there. Okay. You might be wondering, how can they have more air than what they initially had on either of these? The way this is possible is this air, what it represents is kind of a distribution of what the airs could be. If we were off on the 30 and the 100 meters by the positive amounts, then we could be off by a total of positive six meters. And if they were off by the negative amounts each, they could be off by negative six. And if one is positive and one is negative, that could be a plus two or a minus two, respectively, depending on how they worked out. So because of this, because we can reach all the way to plus and minus six, taking a region in between or one standard deviation would give us this 4.47 meters. Uh, it's just a distribution how that works. Um, we're not going to get into the whole Gaussian distribution function and how we can derive that here, but this is how you can kind of add things in quadrature and how you can get a solution uh, just by adding and subtracting things together, okay? So that's how you can add and subtract in quadrature. We are just looking for Q, which is just standard addition or subtraction, 
and then we're looking for dq, which is adding in quadrature. And with that, that's finished. What? You're still here? You want to see more? Of course you do. That's why we're in the physics world.